Hurricane Kiko has weakened down to a Category 2 hurricane out in the Central Pacific Ocean, and it's looking more and more like it's going to pass well to the north of Hawaii. Hey everybody, meteorologist Drew Davis alongside with you. We've got a no-hype forecast for you today when it comes to Hurricane Kiko. It's early morning, September 8th, 2025, and let's get right into the forecast. This is the latest track from the Central Pacific Hurricane Center out there. Again, this storm has weakened rapidly over the last day or so. Yesterday, it was oscillating between a Category 3 and a Category 4 hurricane. Right now, it is a Category 2 hurricane, and it's got maximum sustained winds of 105 miles per hour, so still very strong out there. And it's moving off towards the northwest at 14 miles per hour. Just a quick look as we're going forward into Monday. It's a Category 1 by Monday morning, pushing even further in time to Tuesday and Wednesday. You can see it's tropical storm strength, and it's going to pass well to the north of the state. This track has been pushing further and further north over the past couple of days. Something different about this track compared to what we were seeing in yesterday's forecast track for Kiko. Just extending further in time, the far northwest of Kiko, the long-range weather models, the Central Pacific Hurricane Center yesterday had it getting down to tropical depression status, but they still have it at a tropical storm in this forecast. A quick look at the satellite imagery out there. You can very clearly see Kiko falling apart. I want you to pay attention to the beginning of the scan. You can very clearly see Kiko's eye right about here at the beginning of the scan. This is over the last four hours or so, and one of the ways that we know that Kiko is falling apart is just the collapse of that eye, the collapse of the eye wall. It's not as uh, organized like we were seeing yesterday, where it just looked like a monster out there. And of course, over the past couple of days, if you've been following our forecast uh, closely, we were actually watching for a low pressure system to break off from the jet stream and go further southward. And believe it or not, that disturbance, it was originally a cutoff low, it's gotten much weaker out there. This is that disturbance we've been talking about. This is a low pressure system. You can kind of see the counterclockwise circulation associated with it. And it's one of the reasons Kiko is making that move to the north. Kiko itself is a low pressure system and is attracted to lower pressure. Air, of course, moves from high to low pressure. And so it's trying to balance itself out, moving into an area with lower pressure because it doesn't want to move into high pressure. And uh, it's pretty cool. The entire atmosphere is connected and it's uh, kind of cool to actually see that on the satellite scan out there. I, I think it's pretty neat, and I hope you do too. Uh, of course, this is not going to be a wind event for the island of Ho uh, the island chain out there. You've got the strongest winds to remain out over the ocean. Taking a look at the chance for tropical storm force winds, this, of course, is from the National Hurricane Center. The strongest winds are expected to remain well over the ocean, and it will cut us off from the trade wind flow going into next week. I want to point out, as you're getting closer to the island chain, you see this green color right here. This is a 10% chance for tropical storm force winds from this system. So a very, very slim chance for strong winds from Kiko. And of course, uh, it's really not a wind event for us. It's going to cut us off from the trade wind flow and make us see uh, Kona winds out there. So it's going to get very warm and very humid out there. Of course, the new weather model trend has been pulling Kiko further and further northward out there, just expanding out the spaghetti plots right here. These is, this is even more northward than what we saw on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. There's still some south outliers, so we still have to remain relatively vigilant out there, but the overall trend has been f moving further and further northward. The worst case scenario, of course, would be that more southward track, which is looking less likely. That would be outer band rainfall, minor flooding, if any, and of course, big surf. The best case scenario, which is looking to be the case for Hurricane Kiko, is that more northward track, which would would be over open water, no major impacts, elevated surf, and some pop-up showers. Like I've been mentioning, surf is the main uh, forecasted impact for Kiko. 25-foot waves in the center of Kiko right now. Just getting a look at the center of the storm from the latest data. We're actually seeing around 27-foot wave heights, so a little bit smaller than what we were seeing yesterday with those 30-foot wave heights across Kiko. Of course, the swell is not going to be that large as it gets close to us. We should start seeing east-facing surf on on the rise as we're going into Monday, likely seeing high surf advisories out on east-facing shores throughout Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Surf, of course, is going to be on the 
decline throughout Thursday and Friday. And of course, we've been talking about how Hurricane Kiko is moving into that very hostile environment for tropical cyclone development. It's moving into an area with strong upper level westerly winds. And of course, the winds at the surface here in the tropics come out of the northeast, at least in the northern hemisphere. You're seeing these northeasterly winds. We refer to them as the trades. When you have a difference in upper level winds, a difference in speed and a difference in direction like we're talking about right now, that is called wind shear. And when you have strong wind shear, a large difference in the direction and speed of those winds, you typically see tropical cyclones that just move into those areas just completely fall apart. It's a very hostile environment for tropical cyclone development. Interestingly enough, uh, Kiko is going to be moving into an area uh, filled with warmer water out there. You can see Kiko right now in these green and turquoise colors around 76 degrees. The green, of course, is uh, closer to 78, not conducive for tropical cyclone development. But as it moves north of the state, the waters are going to be warming up gradually, going from an 80 to, you can see, about 81. And of course, even up here closer towards the far northwest, 84 degrees. These waters are actually warmer than average for this time of year. Of course, a quick look, it's moving into warmer waters than average. But right now, the reason it's weakening so fast is because it's in cooler than normal waters. A quick look at the European model, just a quick glimpse at the uh, latest run from the Euro. Watch up here. Kiko going forward is really not even in this track. Uh, the main thing, of course, with Kiko is going to be the winds are going to be cut off. So we could see a few pop up showers over leeward areas. You can see each island seeing rainfall and showers uh, out there on Wednesday afternoon. That's also true for Thursday afternoon. The lighter winds, of course, allow sea breeze showers to develop. So that's something that we're expecting throughout Tuesday and Wednesday. Trades really start to rebuild as we're going into Thursday and Friday. Very similar forecast on the GFS, except Kiko is a little bit further southward. Of course, Kiko is on everybody's mind. It is a Category 2 storm. It looked like a monster out in the eastern Pacific, a Category 4 out there. It's going to stay well to the north of us, bring a very warm, very humid weather across the entirety of the state, and of course, large surf. Outside of tracking the tropics in the central Pacific, and the Eastern Pacific. We're also monitoring the Atlantic, which, believe it or not, has no tropical cyclone development expected over the next seven days or so. And uh, why don't we look at the clock? It is three days away from the climatological peak of hurricane season. That's September 10th. Uh, this video is going out on the morning of September 8th, so I guess it's two days, uh, two days out from the peak. But still, it's very odd to not see any tropical cyclone development out there, or at least the potential for it during this time of year. Taking a quick look at some of the models just one of many out in the Atlantic Ocean. There's a few areas that are trying to spin up some activity, like right here you can see a little bit of activity, a little bit of thunderstorm activity, a small tropical wave probably trying to get its act together. But again, nothing is really sticking in the weather models out there. Of course, we're watching the Bermuda High out there to see how it continues to develop. Of course, this is the main steering mechanism for activity and these tropical waves that come off the western coast of Africa and propagate across the the Atlantic from east to west. And we're going to continue to see how this develops to see if we actually see any further tropical cyclone development. Quiet out there in the Atlantic. There's a few things that I want to talk about in our satellite. Of course, we've been seeing this very weak cold front. It's just kind of been sitting over off of the eastern coast of the United States and kind of over Florida right now. You can actually see some showers popping up over the last several hours. We actually have high pressure that's developed right here over the Midwest, bringing cooler weather. Uh, some frost is possible as you're waking up tomorrow morning in the Midwest and parts of the Northeast. Much cooler weather out there, especially behind that front. And of course, you can even still see uh, that mid-latitude cyclone that was causing uh, that cold front to propagate across the eastern United States still up here. It's kind of uh, dissipating over the next couple of days. A quick look at the mid-level atmosphere chart. Of course, we've got high pressure that's set up over the desert southwest and parts of Mexico. We've also got this 
trough that's starting to dig in over near the Pacific Northwest and parts of California. That should bring a little bit of active weather, maybe a better chance for rainfall for parts of the northwestern parts of the United States. And of course, much warmer than weather expected because of this high pressure that's developing over the Great Plains and parts of the Midwest. Just taking a look long term, this is day 6 through 10, so valid September 13th through September 17th. A quick look, high pressure is really in control over the northern portions of the U.S. It is going to be very, very warm out there, or at least warmer than average for this time of year. Of course, Hurricane Kiko, that's been the main storm we've been watching very, very closely. It is Category 2 and is continuing to uh, weaken as it moves to the north of the island chain. We've had to keep a very close eye on Kiko, and of course, thank you for tuning in uh, for this forecast. Make sure to like and subscribe. You've got a new weather forecast video, long-form weather discussion that comes out every weekday on this channel. And again, really thank you for the support that I've been getting on these videos. This has been really cool to see people enjoying this kind of content, and it means a lot. So I'll see you tomorrow, weather permitting. This has been meteorologist Drew Davis.